Welcome survivors to the ultimate guide for Valheim part 1 where I am going to just be going over the settings that we're going to follow in this uh, first part and of course the three mods that we will be using to just make this guide um, much better and to improve the quality of life with our inventory system and then of course to fix a hitbox problem where you can't really aim at enemies above or below you and then of course just to improve the UI making it look a little bit better okay those are the only three um, mods that I've loaded you will see here that I'm running the um, Bepinex which enables you to run mods on your server and I've got four plugins the first plugin is basically the Bepinex then I've got the um, a better UI you know just making things look a lot better I've got the equipment and quick slots mod which will enable us to put our clothing and our food in separate slots and then I've got the hitbox okay which just enables you to aim up and aim down and um, which probably should be added in the game later okay just to give you an idea of what the better UI does when you start a game it's gonna tell you your stats of your character okay how many kills how many things you've killed how many times you've died how many item you know how many items you've crafted and how many you know base building parts you've crafted I already um, created my character okay as you can see just gave him some not uh, nice hair there Created Luthias, deleted all my other characters that I previously created. And today we are going to be just calling this world um, Valheim. And then the seed that we are going to be using is Tornado. Okay, I did make a, a seed um, guide where I showed you guys 10 awesome seeds. And I looked at the Reddit seed that I showed and I looked at the at my seed that I wanted to use. But after a day or two, I decided on the first seed that I show in that video, which is Tornado. So you can just go look at that video to look what the seed looks like. And yes, so we're going to use that seed, Tornado. I think it's spelled correctly. And there we go. We've only got one world. We deleted the, all the other worlds to have a fresh start. And you can, of course, use a random world, but we're just going to go start. Okay, so when you start the game, you're going to be dropped off at this altar, okay, which has all the five bosses that is in the game at the moment. And of course, you've got hooks to put their heads here. And um, Yugen, me and Yugen have got a very good relationship, but he said it's fine if I tell you guys what to do. So we're just going to um, ignore him with what he has to say. First thing you want to do when you get to this altar is basically just register the first boss. Okay, so you just want to get the first boss location. That is not the only way to kill the boss, okay? You can either get a boss locator like this, um, a registry location tablet, or you can just find the boss yourself, okay? So this isn't necessary, but it does make things a, bit, a little bit easier, okay? And then a big secret, or not a big secret, when you start the game, you will see that when you pick up a stone and a stone, and uh, and wood which you will get right here okay it opens up the crafting recipes okay and you'll see that you need five wood and four stone for a stone axe which is your primary weapon to start with because you want to start chopping down trees getting wood easier okay but what some of you might not know is when you start in this area here everything that you need is very very close by so if you come and look behind these tablets behind these sacrificial stones I'm just going to get rid of you again then you'll get mushrooms okay which is and um, the food that you're going to be using with meat and necktails okay and you'll be getting your first berries here okay so just in case you were wondering you will get you will get the two main resources at your starting location which is berries and mushrooms okay 
And then if we just look around, you'll see that you can pick up wood in your area. Okay. And then we can just run to make it a little bit faster, but just in your starting area. Okay. You don't have to go far. Just in your starting area, you will get the resources that you need to create the stone axe. So in this game, when you press M, you've got a map. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to use this marker to mark um, berries and mushrooms and plants. Okay. Then we're going to use this marker to mark copper ore deposits or something that we have to mine or where we're going to leave our ship. So it will either be a mining locator or it will be where we left our ship. Then this will be our main base icon. These will be the different encampments that we make. And if we make a, um, a base on another biome, we'll use this marker again. And this is just going to be basically our teleporter markers, which we will add names to. Okay, so... Yeah, this is basically the only thing we will add names to so that we can remember the, the teleporter's names and that makes it easier for us. But we don't have to put in any text, okay? And then all I'm going to do now is I can hit a little bush like this, okay? And another thing you will see as I'm hitting the tree in the top left-hand corner, it will show you how your skill is going up at what and at what speed your skill is going up with what you're busy with which is a very, very nice um, quality of life. So I don't really want to beat the, the bush that the bear is on, okay? So I'm just going to beat this little bush, which doesn't take too long to destroy. And there we go. Now we've got our five wood and our four stones, and we can craft our axe. Okay, and because we collected extra stone, we're not, we're not really going to be worried about the stone, okay? But what we want to do now is we just want to take a mushroom and a berry, okay? You can eat three kinds of foods. And the three foods that you're going to focus on is basically meat, cooked meat from boars and deers. And then um, cooked um, grilled necktail that you will get from necks, they little lizards. And then you want to combine that with the mushrooms if possible, okay? If you're in a dangerous situation, honey is also a good option, but you know, not the best. So what we're going to do, you can see the UI as little stars and just bars for your durability. It gives us these five slots here, okay, which we can put our food in, which is really, really nice. So we're saving these five slots, which will normally take up this inventory of yours. And we're saving up these three food slots or potion slots, which would have also taken up these slots, which just ends up being frustrating because you have to run up and down to your base a lot uh, more. Okay, but just a nice little quality of life change. And now that we've got a normal stone axe, we can of course get wood a lot more easier. Okay, these little trees, little beech trees are gonna give us two wood logs. And of course, we're gaining, we're gaining the experience there as well. And then what you want to do as soon as you can is craft a torch, okay? A torch is going to be very important. Of course, we started with the torch, so that was a bit of a waste. But you can see this guy's attacking us. As soon as we take out the torch, he's not going to attack us. He's not going to hit us anymore. They might still throw us with rocks, but they are not going to basically, you know, um, irritate us or bother us because these guys are the most important. You know, the most irritating enemies that you'll find in the game, they're going to bother you all day long. So now with the torch, you can just go up to them and start hitting them, okay? And you can see with the UI, you, you'll, you'll see how much life they have, so that it's better for you to understand how much damage each weapon is doing to a certain target, and in that way, try and figure out what's the best um, way to kill that certain enemy. There are gray numbers, which means the enemy is resistant to that damage type. And then there's white num damage numbers that comes out of them, telling you that it's normal damage. And then if a yellow number comes out of them, it means they are weak to that weapon. So it's giving you, you know, uh, bonus damage. But because of various effects on weapons, the yellow numbers don't always pop off. Okay, because you get frost damage and fire damage and all kinds of damage. And it's just better to use the numbers to see what's the most effective weapon to kill a certain enemy, okay? And what we're gonna do right from the start is build a hammer as soon as we can. 
And as soon as we build a hammer, we can make a campfire, a wood stack, the basic tools, and the most important thing is a workbench. So as soon as we equip the hammer in slot 3, then we can click the right mouse button, okay, and go to crafting, where we will be able to make a workbench. And the workbench is extremely important because you can get a lot of wood very, very easily. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to show you how. So first of all, we need 10 wood. Now, what I do know is a tree. Okay, the oak tree is too hard. A tree, and, you, and this one will also be too hard, the birch tree. Later on, when you get... Uh, when you get a bronze axe, you'll be able to cut down these birch trees for core wood, which is very, very important. Okay, and of course, when the name is red, they are alerted to you. And then the different colors, you know, just tells you if they, if they don't see you, if they see you, and if they're going to attack you. So we know a tree gives us um, 10 wood logs for each section. So one tree gives you 20 wood. Okay, and I'm going to explain that to you now. As soon as you cut down the tree, it's going to fall down. Okay. And now it's one big piece. Okay, so what we need to do now, and with this mod, I can aim up, which is a really great quality of life, because normally you wouldn't be able to hit it. So it's going to break up into two pieces now. Hmm. And yes, that's a great tip as well. You can die from trees. <laughs> okay. Uh, so much for the wildlife challenge. Okay. So, yeah, guys, this is just the guide. So I'm just showing you everything that can happen. And as soon as you die, you've got a skeleton icon. And he's just going to tell me I've died. Thank you very much. Okay. As soon as you interact with your body. That activates the corpse run okay you can see the corpse run and when you look at your effects it will always tell you here what your effect is so no skill drain after you've died for 10 minutes you won't your skills won't be drained what i mean by skill drain is every time you die you will lose five percent of all your skills okay which is a lot it has a major effect on you and then corpse run is basically right after you've died okay you can um you get a corpse run for five minutes is it five minutes? I just want to see. No, no. It's about a minute. Okay. It's about a minute. So here we can see you can run longer. So you can run longer and take significantly less damage from physical attacks. Jump stamina minus 75%. Run stamina minus 75%. And then damage modifiers. Very resistant versus blunt slash and pierce. Okay. So at the end of the day, when you run back to your body, make sure you don't take any hits. But then... Um, of course, as you just have to click on your body without any inventory on you, and then you'll be able to get away from the danger. So you just have to make a beeline for your body, and then you'll have that minute where your possibility of surviving is a lot higher. Again, the, the better UI mod is just giving me little stars above my weapons, and as you can see, green is great, yellow, the durability is going down, red, the durability will be gone. And as soon as we equip a piece of clothing with our right mouse button, it goes into our equipment slot. Okay? It's just um, this the food, basically, that we have to put back into our equipment slots. But I don't really mind, guys. These these are eight slots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight slots of your inventory that is taken. Then you still get the belt. You get the headlamp. You know? And you get another piece of food. So... Basically, in the game, your clothing and your food and the items that you can buy at the trader takes up half of your inventory space. Okay, that's why I say this mod is a really, really good quality of life mod. And now that we take our axe again, has this thing broken yet? No, it hasn't. Or has it? Has the other piece broken off? Yeah, here's the other piece, boys. So this one piece is going to give us 10 wood. There we go. <laughs> you will see there, added wood times 10. And if we come to the other piece. Just managing our stamina down below. We can't spam the button. We just have to time our attacks. There we get another 10 wood. Okay. 
and I'm not interested in what you guys are going to say at the moment. I want you, I want to show you guys how to get wood easily. So you can either just um, chop down trees or you can use this. You can use this house, okay, for a base location. And the houses will always give you inventory. If you want to get inventory very fast, just hold um, control in and click on it, okay, to transfer it um, very, very fast. And what we're going to do now is we are literally going to just bold and you can just use the mouse scroll wheel to scroll up in and out what we are going to do now is we're just going to equip the hammer put down the workbench and then the workbench gives us other options and then we're just gonna you can still you can click the middle mouse button like this but i like to um, select the um, hammer again and now we can just break this house apart okay it's very easy to use these houses. I've done it um, with my One Life Challenge. And in the beginning of my um, playthrough that I finished the game. But in this guide, we are going to focus on building your own beautiful base. Okay. So this is a very, very easy way to get a lot of wood without having to chop down trees. And there's quite a few of these houses in the, you know, in the starting area. And then it's a great way to get um, beehives as well. Because you can just break down the house and the beehive will come crashing down. Instead of you having to shoo down the beehive, you know, or whatever. <clears throat> so again it, again, it takes stamina. And we're just going to press C and V to refresh our food a little bit. And we're going to break everything here. Okay, we're going to break everything here. And that's it. We've cleared it out. And now we're sitting with 60 wood. Okay. 60 wood. So we had 20 minus the 10. So let's say we, um, let's say we had 10 wood. Okay. 50 wood. You will need to chop down two and a half trees, two and a half whole grown trees where this is a lot shorter and we're getting our food back. So we just want to talk to you again. When you want to interact with something, go off your hammer because your hammer doesn't really allow you to interact with anything except build items. So we're going to just talk to him, make him disappear, select our hammer, middle mouse button, and now we've got all the resources back. And guys, I'm really just going to ignore him, okay? Okay, now that that's done, we need to start making a fire and cook some food. We can make a fire immediately to get the rested buff, but what we want to do right now is just to get something that we can kill. Now deers, you can kill deers. There's there's a deer and a boar there. This is perfect. So we're going to try and use our sneaking skill to sneak up behind this deer. Luckily, they don't warn each other. But that boar that's looking at the deer might spoil our fun here. Okay, now our sneaking skill isn't very high. But as you can see below the inventory there at the top left, you can see what skill you're busy uh, making better. So we're just going to walk up behind him. He's got 10 health. And because he, because he got away, we can kill the boar. And then the boar is going to open up um, a lot of crafting recipes, which is very, very important. But of course, the deer is going to open up a lot of cross crafting recipes as well. Okay, so I'm going to show you a secret. Even if you lose a deer, the deer will come back after some time. There where you saw the deer the first time, he will come back after some time, okay? And never take out your torch if you want to hunt a deer or a boar. The torches are just to keep those guys away because a torch will um, chase them away. But yeah, the deer comes again, okay? Doesn't take too long at all. And we just have to wait for him to relax. And of course, we know his health is going to be quite low. Okay, so we just want to get up behind him without alerting the boar. We just want to get a shot in without... There he is. It's the same deer that was here previously. And there we go. He's opening up the deer. He's giving us a deer trophy. We need two to summon the first boss. And then, of course, he's opened up um, other recipes to us as well, like leather armor and whatever. Okay. And that's basically it for day one, guys. You need to kill um, deers and you need to focus on the boars. Then you need to get some honey, which we will do in the next episode, in, the, in part two. 
and you're gonna need to get flint okay now flint isn't too difficult um yeah i'm not gonna pick up wood anymore so you run a lot faster like this um and it's night time so it doesn't really matter we don't really want to play at night although it's not night yet it will say it's cold um when it's night time it will say it's cold those guys you definitely want to get them they are one stars okay actually meaning they are level two and they'll give you a lot more um skin and meat and stuff like that and then of course you get level three which has got two stars on and this better ui definitely warns you because you get enemies that are a lot stronger as well and you don't really want to mess with them okay so yes it's going to become nighttime soon and at any water source you'll find necks okay the little the little lizards that i was talking about but we just want yeah now this is nighttime so daytime lasts for 21 minutes and nighttime lasts for nine minutes okay just a mental note there so you guys are just going to tell us something and all we want to do now is try and see if we can find water there we go we found water of course um this is my seed so you know don't know exactly where things are but i can get there a bit quicker so yeah what we really want to do right now is basically just sleep the night away okay so what we're gonna do is quickly build a workbench just make sure there's cover underneath us so we want to take the hammer and because we broke up the workbench we always have its resources so we want to put the workbench down there and then we just want to put down a bed and make sure the bed's going to be underneath some cover so we want to put the bed down there okay and you guys are going to tell us we can sleep again and now we're going to um claim the bed but before we claim the bed okay we press c there just press control to crouch down and apparently apparently we can't sit down so all i'm gonna do now guys is to get the rested buff i am just going to select the hammer and oh what am i missing oh i'm missing stones okay that doesn't matter the cold the cold isn't great so we're going to claim this bed and then we're going to sleep unfortunately they don't want us to sleep so then we're just going to break this open because they say there's en enemies nearby i'm not sure which enemies they're talking about but what i do know is i need some stone so that will be good for the fire um okay we need one more stone so we're just going to get one more stone here somewhere okay we'll take our axe kill him quite quickly like i say they can still th throw you with rocks but it's not it's not bad and of course the ocean is gonna ocean or rivers are gonna be great places to find next the little lizards that we need and of course flint and rocks okay it's gonna be great for flint and rocks and in the next part two i'll show you flint this is flint that you get close to water and that of course opens up a flint axe a flint spear um chopping block and tanning rack which will upgrade our workstation and then sir if we if we get us a, uh, a tree um in the black forest which we're not going to cover today if we get a tree in the black forest it will enable us to craft a really cool um bow okay so all i'm going to do is i'm going to put the fire down here um and then just add a little bit of uh, add a little bit of uh wood to it and now i should be able to sleep okay and because i'm underneath cover and i've got a fire close to me and i've got a bed that's giving me three extra comfort points okay so seven is basically zero comfort so we should be at 11 minutes okay with four so one is one is basically um eight if you've got a comfort level of one it's eight minutes if you've got zero comfort level it's seven minutes but you'll always have a comfort level of one you just need one fire outside because we've got the rested buff this is why it's important a fire keeps you warm and cozy shelter shelters you from the rain but the resting when you're resting 
it gives you 200% health regen and 300% uh, stamina regen. Very, very important. If you're in danger or you need to build up um, stamina and health quickly, you know, just eat the right food because without the right food, you're not really going to regen your health quickly enough. That's why I say the honey is very important for that. And then once you are rested, you've got that timer, you've got a 50% um, health regen bonus and a 100% stamina regen bonus, okay? So while you're resting, it's great, but, you know, so you're resting now because you're close to the fire, but as soon as you're gone, you've only got the rested buff, okay? Which is still going to help you a heck of a lot. Okay, so guys, if you did enjoy this video, do me a favor and click that like button. And if you want to see future episodes of the Ultimate Guide for Valheim, then, you know, just click the sub button and remember to click that bell button to be notified of the next video. And yes, we are just going to be covering short pieces of information in every single episode and not showing you any, anything boring. Okay, I'll be cutting out as, as much as I can. But this is just going to be a concise guide how to get to the end of the game and make your life a lot easier, which the three mods that I've added is already doing. Okay, so in the next episode, we're going to use our fire to cook some meat and yeah, show you guys what is the best um, three foods to start. Have a great day. See you next time. Cheers.